Okay, we have gotten to the point where you need to go out and you need to find a scientific abstract. And what in the heck is a scientific abstract? A scientific abstract is, basically, I think of it as a summary. It gives you the big picture of what somebody or a bunch of somebody's did in an experiment. Um, if you've heard the word abstract before, you've probably heard about it as like a concept, like in regular language, an abstract is some kind of a thing that can't be touched, like a, a thought or a vision or um, some kind of concept can be abstract, like the meaning of life and deep stuff like that. But in science, an abstract is a summary. It tells us, it's basically a way to find out what's in a scientific study without reading the whole darn study. And why is that a good thing? Why do they exist? Because it saves you time. And why is that nice? Well, let's just say that you were a doctor. And if you were a doctor, um, you might read a half dozen medical research papers in a month. And if you had to read the whole paper, you'd, you'd read fewer than that. So this, you know, this is a way to kind of uh, get a lot of information really fast. And just because I think it's really cool, uh, we've now got this supercomputer. Its name is Watson. Uh, the company IBM made it. And it can read half a million papers, the whole paper, in 15 seconds. So that's pretty sweet. So now, now doctors are using Watson all over the country to try and help uh, people with medical issues. But anyway, um, I'm in this class. I've got to find an abstract. I, I need to think of something. So how does someone who doesn't know what they're looking for find one? So you, you know you need an abstract. What the heck are you going to do? Well, chances are if you just sit and think about anything in the natural world, somebody's done some kind of a study related to it, like maybe how hard certain rocks are or certain chemicals in the air we breathe or what kind of fish live in a certain stream. Uh, I could go on and on. Um, years ago, I was told by professors that bees can see ultraviolet light. So if you were a flower that gave off ultraviolet light, you reflected UV, you'd have a higher chance of getting pollinated by bees. So I thought, yeah, okay, I'm going to make sure that I haven't been lying to kids for all these years. I'm going to snoop around about that. So here's what I did. Uh, I went to Google and I typed in these five words. I typed in journal, whoops, I typed in uh, journal, study, bees, ultraviolet light. Why did I put in the word journal? Uh, the reason why is because journals are where scientists, whoops, what is going on here? Um, journals are where scientists report their findings and then they get published and that, you know, it, uh, it allows other scientists to read what they wrote about and maybe do try and duplicate it or maybe change it a little bit. So uh, sci online journals are a great place to look for abstracts. And this journal that I happen to find was called the Journal of Experimental Biology. So if I click on this, I find this study from years ago. This study was done in 1939, so not 100 years ago, but quite a long time ago. And they don't call it an abstract. They just call it a summary, and that's fine with me. Um, so let's go back to Moodle here. Uh, inside Variables and Experiments, if you click Find and Study an Abstract, uh, this page comes up, and I'm logged in as a student right now, so it looks the same as you, uh, to me as it does to you. And it says, find and link to an online abstract for a scientific study. Medical studies are fine. Social studies surveys are not acceptable. So I don't care about politics stuff. No, I don't care about who likes what cereal better. No. Um, psychological studies might be okay. Check with me first if you find one that you want to do. Um, no duplicates. If, uh, and I'm not going to police this myself, but if, if I see that two kids use the same abstract, even if it's later on, months later, I will go in and I will delete the second one, whoever did it later. So don't copy anybody else's. Don't worry, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of abstracts out there, so nobody should find the same two. Um, let's see. So let's look at what some kids have already done. Uh, this kid found a study... And look at this, question or problem. So somebody wanted to know, do patient outcomes differ between those treated by male and female physicians? Well, that, and it wasn't really an experiment, it was a survey. They asked uh, like over one and a half million people, they, they found hospital records. And this kind of might blow your mind, but it turns out that 
female doctor rates, female doctors have fewer deaths and readmissions to the hospital. And that makes me very happy that my doctor is a female. So anyway, let me, let me go back to uh, the, the Moodle. And it says right here, add an entry. So if I click add an entry, and there might be a couple mistakes in here, so I might have to clean this up. But you're going to see a page that looks like this. This is where you type stuff, like title, the main author, the question or problem, what were they trying to find out, the hypothesis, what, what did they think the answer was. This is often listed in the abstract, but you might not find the hypothesis if you don't find one. Um, you know, type in this box, type in, I did not see a hypothesis or I couldn't find one. But when I snoop through and look at these, if I find one, then that's not good if you didn't find one. Um, the results. The results are what they discovered. So if I go back to mine about bees here, um, if I read this, there's only four and a half paragraphs. If I read this, read this paragraph right here, it talks about what they discovered about what wavelengths of light the bees like best. Um, so I would write about, okay, I would say um, this color between this and this, the bees really dug it. And down here, uh, between that and that, the bees were a little less into it, that kind of thing. Um, so what else is on here? Um, results, uh, that we just covered that. Experiment, what did they actually do? So going back to mine, what did they actually do? Um, in this paragraph right here, it talks about what they did. They showed bees different colors, different wavelengths of light, and they discovered which ones the bees were interested in. So if they changed the, the wavelength, then all of a sudden the white paper would be unattractive to the bee. He'd be like, nah, I'm not interested. So right here, you would describe what they did. You would say uh, they showed the bee different colors, and they measured how interested the bee was in it. Uh, one other thing about this, quite often you'll see a link to download the whole thing. And if you feel like reading the whole study, you can do that if you're into it. Uh, and quite often some of these websites will want you to pay for it, but we're not interested in the whole study, uh, so you don't have to do that. And down here at the bottom, uh, you have to enter a URL. That's the web address. So if I go back to the study I got right here, here in the address bar, it says jeb.biologist.org, and here's this stuff. All I would do is I would just copy, and I would paste it in right here, and there you go. And then click Save and View. Uh, I'm not actually going to do it because I don't want to clutter up the database, but that's it. And this is what you have to do for the um, find and study and abstract activity.